There is a small town surrounded by mountains and shrouded in fog all year round. One foggy night. The psychiatrist, Augusto, is waken up by a phone call to go to the hospital. Detective Vogel just had a car accident. He himself is not injured, but there is unknown blood on his clothes. The police suspects that Vogel hit someone, but Vogel claims that he has no memory of what happened. So the police asks Augusto to do a mental evaluation on Vogel. Facing Augusto's inquiry, Vogel just vaguely says that everything was caused by the mist. But no one expected that this bizarre car accident would reveal a serial murder. The murderer shows extremely high IQ. This makes both murders perfect crimes, almost impossible to solve. Today, we will talk about a psychological thriller. The Girl in the Fog. The story started a few weeks ago. On December 23rd, Anna, a 16-year-old small-town girl, mysteriously disappeared on her way to church. The folks of this town are simple, and there has been no crime for many years, so there are no cameras installed in the town. Just when the small town police were helpless, the famous Detective Vogel came to the town to participate in the investigation of the case. And as parents told Vogel, the small town police initially determined that she had run away from home because girls of this age were rebellious. But in their opinions, their daughter was well behaved and had no abnormal behavior before she disappeared. So, and as parents suspected that someone had kidnapped their daughter. After coming out of Anna's house, Vogel deliberately clapped his hands to make some noise. The applause immediately attracted the neighbor to look around. Such a little noise can even attract the attention of the residents. How could the girl vanish quietly? Based on this, Vogel inferred that an acquaintance should have committed the crime. The kidnappers had not asked for ransom so far, which showed that Anna's life was already in danger. Later, Vogel informed the media about the disappearance. After seeing the news, many volunteers came to the town to help finding Anna. They searched the surrounding area but found nothing. Reporters also came to the town to report on the case. Anna's disappearance soon became the focus of national attention. The residents of the town spontaneously came to Anna's house to pray for her. At this time, a boy with suspicious behavior in the silent crowd attracted Vogel's attention. Vogel then followed him all the way to the boy's home. It turned out that the boy and Anna were classmates. He confessed that he was Anna's admirer. He followed her and secretly photographed her, but he never thought of harming her. Based on the police's intuition and experience, Vogel believed that the boy should have nothing to do with the case. But Vogel discovered an important clue on the video. Just a few days before Anna disappeared, a suspicious white jeep always appeared next to Anna. Seemed to be following her. However, Vogel suddenly stopped his story. He picks up a fish specimen on Augusto's desk and asks him what kind of fish it is. Augusto tells him it's called rainbow trout, and it is the only species he would go for fishing. There is a red strip pattern on the side of the fish body, which is very beautiful. Every time he catches this kind of fish, Augusto will make it as a specimen. Looking at the red strip of the rainbow trout, Vogel suddenly recalls that the missing girl happened to have red hair. Then his thoughts returns to the case. Through the video taken secretly by the boy, the police quickly found the white jeep. The owner of the car was named Loris, a middle school teacher in town. The missing girl and the boy who secretly photographed Anna are both his students. Half a year ago, he and his wife had a marriage crisis. In order to maintain this family and repair the relationship with his wife, they moved to this town. But the wages here were poor, and the family's life was stretched. Not only did the relationship between them not ease, they often quarreled over the money. Loris might have committed a crime because of his inner depression. In addition, Loris had no alibi on the day of the crime. He claimed that he had been hiking all day and cut his hands. But no one proved it, which showed that Loris was suspected of committing a major crime. The police then checked Loris's white jeep, but unfortunately found no trace of Anna. In order to force Loris to commit the crime, Vogel secretly sent the video of him stalking Anna to the media. This is Vogel's old trick. He is very good at using the power of the media and public to put pressure on suspects and dig out clues. Reporters soon swarmed in and surrounded Loris's house, demanding him explaining how he committed the crime. Although there was no evidence showed that Loris was the kidnapper, but in the eyes of these outraged reporters, he was already a kidnapper and murderer. Loris's whole family was frightened by the scene. Next day, a lawyer named Av found Loris and exposed Vogel's evil deeds to him. Av claimed that Vogel was not a righteous detective. When solving the case, he didn't care about evidence at all. As long as he believes that a person was a criminal, he would use any means to send him to prison. Four years ago, a serial bomber appeared in the city. Bombers planted small bombs in supermarket, caused many injuries and accidents. 
Although there was no evidence, but Vogel still used the pressure of the media and public to send a suspect named Romeo to prison. Av was Romeo's defense lawyer. Until not long ago, Romeo waited for the final judgment. Because the prosecutor couldn't find any evidence, the court acquitted him and released him. Although Romeo received millions of euros in compensation for mental damages, but because he suffered a stroke in prison, he was no longer able to enjoy this money anymore. As a lawyer with a sense of justice, Av came here to warn him. Vogel's reputation was damaged because of Romeo's case, and now, he urgently needed to solve a huge case to restore his former glory. Av was well aware of his case handling and was good at using the media to put pressure on suspects, so you must withstand the pressure of the media. Before Loris had time to digest the lawyer's advice, something happened that night. One of his female students claimed in a television interview that Loris sent her a harassing text message, now, everyone took Loris as a perverted teacher. But in fact, these were all rumors spread by female students. They wanted to be famous on TV, so they even maliciously slandered their teachers in order to gain attention. Faced with such a turbulent gossip, Loris's mind gradually collapsed. His wife and daughter also began to doubt him and chose to leave him temporarily. Seeing that his plan had succeeded, Vogel met with Loris privately and showed him the latest evidence. Although the police did not find Anna's DNA in Loris's car, they did find some orange cat hair, and Anna once fed a stray cat. As long as the police found the orange cat and proved that the hair on its body matched the cat hair on Loris's car, Loris was linked to the case like a nail in the board. Facing Vogel's threat, Loris slammed the table angrily. Then he said something that sounded like a curse and walked away. Then, Vogel discovered that Loris had smashed too hard and left a small stain of blood on the table. The next day, Loris dressed himself up and returned to school to give lectures. Unexpectedly, Vogel directly walked in. Loris ignored him. He even talked provocatively about his experience on writing. The first step to become a good writer is to imitate, but evil is often the key to drive the story. Every story must have an innocent victim. In novels, people kill because of hatred, but in real life, murderers often do it for money. Vogel understood Loris's provocation and directly interrupted his talk then claimed that the police had found Anna's backpack and detected Loris's blood on it. Loris was unable to defend himself and was soon arrested and charged with kidnapping and murder. At this point, Vogel stops again and starts chatting with Augusto. He asks him, as a great psychiatrist, why did you come to settle in this remote town? Augusto tells him that he moved to the town 40 years ago and he likes the quietness here, but sometimes excessive silence makes people forget the fear of death. It turns out that Augusto had a heart attack 30 years ago and had a heart bypass surgery. Back then, he had just gotten married and had children and was in his prime years, so he was so scared of death. After that, he decided to settle down in this town. Then Vogel says that he is not afraid of death at all. As a police officer, he already got used to it. So you never worry about arresting the wrong person because you don't care about the life or death of these suspects. Like that Romeo who had a stroke in prison. Vogel immediately argues that he had not arrested the wrong person. Since Romeo was in prison, there have been no bombings in supermarkets. Augusto suddenly changes the topic, questioning whether the blood stains on Anna's backpack were deliberately put there by Vogel. Vogel does not deny it, and then he continues to talk about Anna's case. The news of Loris' arrest quickly made headlines. Vogel then received a call from a retired reporter. The lady claimed that she had evidence to prove Loris' innocence. Vogel was invited to her home. The name of the reporter is Beatrice, she told Vogel. 30 years ago, there had been similar cases of missing girls in the town. A total of six girls disappeared into the mist, one after another. Beatrice concluded that there must be a serial killer kidnapping and killing girls in this town. She also nicknamed the killer, the Fogman. But the police at that time were very ineffective. They believed that the girls disappeared because they cannot bear the loneliness of the small town. The families of the missing girls did not want to believe that their daughters had been murdered because they thought they still had hope. So, the serial disappearance case became an unsolved case. But after the sixth girl disappeared, the fog man suddenly stopped kidnapping, and Beatrice's investigation was also interrupted. She can still remember the original six missing girls. They were all between 14 to 16 years old, and they all had long red hair and freckles on their faces. The seventh girl, Anna, was the same. So Beatrice suspected that the fog man had started committing crimes again after 30 years. And 30 years ago, the suspect Loris was just a child. How could he be the fog man? In other words, there must be someone else who kidnapped Anna. After saying that, Beatrice handed a locked diary to Vogel. This was an anonymous package she received not long ago. The sender explicitly asked her to forward it to Vogel. 
Vogel then forcibly opened the diary and discovered that the owner of the diary was Anna. Anna mentioned in her diary that she fell in love with the cute boy. She also secretly wrote his name's initials on her left wrist. There was also a photo in Anna's diary. This was a clue that the murderer deliberately left for Vogel. Vogel found a cross in a woods based on the photo prompts, and dug out a box of videotapes underneath, which recorded the entire process of the murder of Anna. But the murderer was wearing protective clothing and could not see his face at all. At the end of the video, the murderer deliberately showed the place where he committed the crime. It was an abandoned hotel in a small town. Vogel hurriedly drove to the hotel and found the room where Anna was killed. But the place had been cleaned. Vogel immediately realized that he had been tricked by the murderer, and he angrily tore up the videotape. At this moment, a group of reporters broke in and asked Vogel if he was destroying evidence. Only then did Vogel realize that not only had he been tricked, but he had also fallen into the murderer's trap. With his deplorable record in the bombing case, the media began to report that he destroyed evidence and buried good people. As the result, Vogel not only failed to restore his reputation, instead became an even more notorious detective. The police also quickly figured out Vogel had fabricated the bloodstain. Loris then was acquitted and received compensation for emotional distress. From pervert teacher to victim, Loris suddenly became a celebrity in the nation. He also participated in a TV interview to tell his tragic experience. Still, Vogel did not give up investigating Anna's case and secretly paid attention to Loris's whereabouts. One time, he suddenly discovered the same initials painted on Loris's left wrist. Vogel suddenly realized and figured everything out. He guessed it right, the murderer of Anna was not the Fogman, but Loris. This was a copycat crime, Loris once said in class. The first step to become a good writer is to imitate, but evil is often the key to drive the story. Every story must have an innocent victim. In novels, people kill because of hatred, but in real life, murderers often do it for money. The truth of the story was hidden behind these sentences. Budget had always been tight for the Loris family. Not long ago, he saw the news that Romeo received a huge mental compensation, also learned about the serial disappearance of girls that happened in the town 30 years ago. His female student, Anna, happened to meet the murderer's criteria. What's more, one boy in their class often secretly took photos of Anna's whereabouts. So an evil money-making plan took shape in Loris's mind. Anna then became the innocent victim. First, Loris followed Anna, intentionally appeared at the boy's recordings and led Vogel to doubt his car. He expected that Vogel would do anything to forge evidence in order to solve the case. So when being questioned, he pretended getting angry, slapped the table to hurt his palm, left traces of his own blood. He first used the stray orange cat to distract Anna's attention, then took her to the hotel and killed her, and the killing process was also recorded. Loris cleaned up the scene, hid the body, and mailed the videotape and Anna's diary to Beatrice. The reason why he sent the package to Beatrice was to point the murderer to the fog man through her mouth. As expected, Beatrice did exactly the same and told the story of the serial disappearances. Vogel was deceived into the murder scene based on the so-called clues. Loris then called the media to come over. He originally wanted to reveal the videotape to make everyone believe that the fog man committed another crime. Unexpectedly, the reporters happened to bump into Vogel tearing up the videotape. So Vogel destroying evidence and framing Loris was confirmed. In the end, Loris successfully obtained a large sum of money for mental damages with the help of the lawyer. To show off his perfect crime, Loris also drew the same letter O on his wrist. Loris did not check in his diary because Anna's diary was locked. He has no interest in the life of this teenager girl, but it was this diary that left a trace in his crime. At this point, Vogel finally stops. Augusto is silent for a long time and gives his own speculation. He thinks that Vogel hasn't lost memories and has no mental problems. Vogel knows very well that he has completely lost to Loris in this game. And his body is not found and there is no evidence shows that Loris committed the crime. What can a small letter O on the his wrist do? In order to revenge Loris, Vogel simply killed him without any hesitation. The blood on him is Loris. Maybe he was too nervous after the murder and had a car accident. Vogel then pretended to have amnesia in order to evade responsibility. After listening to Augusto's speculation, Vogel just says, The most stupid thing about the devil is vanity. If the devil's crimes can't be exposed to the world, then what's the fun in being a devil? Then the police at the door comes in and arrests Vogel. Augusto finishes his work and returns home. He glances at his sleeping wife and then quietly comes to the garage, finding a box that is full of rust. Inside, six strands of red hair, lying there quietly. Meanwhile, there are sirens and the sound of police breaking into his house. 
Have you guessed the murderer right? In fact, all the stories Vogel told Augusto was true. Except the car accident and the blood stain on his clothes. Vogel gradually confirms Augusto is the murderer because of his timeline and the seven rainbow trout specimens in his office. The rusted box also confirms Vogel's speculation in the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.